What if Oscar Piastri wins a race before Lando Norris? I think it's safe to say of all the teams on the grid right now, McLaren have the most stable and balanced and harmonious lineup right now. McLaren are currently sitting fifth in the Constructors' Championship, but if you look at the table and look at all the teams above them, they seem to have a team dynamic where one is either misfiring massively or both the drivers are at war with each other and they can't be in the same room. But another thing you'll notice with McLaren is that neither of their drivers have managed to rack up a win yet. Now, Norris has come close, credit to him, but he has had to deal with the all-conquering Red Bulls and Mercedes in recent years, which, by the way, blast off into the distance and have bulletproof reliability. But despite Norris and Piastri neither having won a race yet, both of them are very likeable and very capable and also very marketable drivers. Each have laid out some amazing performances and have secured podiums since McLaren's developments have come into play halfway through the season. And just before we crack on, make sure you click subscribe so you can stay up to date with any of my new content. Norris and Piastri seem to be the dream team that any team principal would love to have right now. Their chemistry is fantastic, they have a great dynamic between them, and there isn't much out there that would appear to come along and ruin this. Except, what if Oscar Piastri wins a race before Lando Norris? Now straight away, I can't think of anything more spicy to happen to such a balanced team like McLaren. There's just so many knock-on effects. I mean, we could see Norris change his character massively because I think this would have such a huge effect on him. You know, we could see him ditch this cheeky, chappy, smiley character and become this kind of dark and much more serious driver than he is now. Whether that actually works out or not for him, I'm not sure, but I think that might happen. It could lead to Norris doubting himself and just wondering what is it going to take to get this first win? But now that Max Verstappen has resumed his 2023 world domination tour, a win for Piastri seems unlikely to happen even it's by merit or because it's a race with lots of retirements and things like that. It's even unlikely for anyone other than Max to get a win at the moment, so I'm not knocking your abilities, Oscar. But what I'm saying is, all it takes is just some damp conditions, a few cars to collide at the start of the race, safety car, uh, good strategy, and it's game on. So let's take a little look at Oscar Piastri. Now he's had a lot more pressure put on him than other rookies in recent memory simply because of the whole Alpine contractual cock up, is he in, is he out thing that went on, which then led him to sign for McLaren. Absolutely the right decision. And I think also Drive to Survive put a lot more spotlight on this than there normally would have been. So this led to everyone in the F1 community saying, after all this fuss and bother, this guy better be good. And good he was. He looked comfortable in the car immediately, despite the troubles that McLaren were having in the first half of the season. Yeah, okay, he made a couple of mistakes and things, but, you know, who doesn't in their first season? And another thing is, it doesn't feel like he's a rookie. It looks like he's been there for a while. He doesn't have that label hanging over his head the same way that Sargent or De Vries do or did. You know, he's a solid driver that's gonna be around with us for many years to come, I think. And combining his ability with a decent car, that spells race winner to me. So now let's look at Lando Norris. He's amazingly, he's still only 23 years old. He's been at McLaren for a, a while now, and he is now absolutely part of the furniture there. He is absolutely one of the best out there at the moment. And with his McLaren contract ending in 2025, there are a lot of teams out there that would love to have his signature on the dotted line. However, with all this behind him and everything, he still has not secured that elusive first win. Now, fair play to Norris. He has never raced in a season where it is open season. Anytime he's been racing, it's been dominated by one or two cars, as I said, which are always up there and have that bulletproof reliability as well. So it seems at the very least, the best he can hope for 
is a second or third place. And I wonder if he's starting to approach that Jensen Button territory where people are going to start to say to him, you've had all this hype, you've nearly had 100 race starts and there's still no wins. When's it going to happen? What's going on? But also remember Jensen was in the same shoes because he had the Ferrari of Michael Schumacher to deal with and Alonso and Raikkonen, but that's a different story. You know, Jensen got his first win in 2006 at 113 starts. Norris is just under 100 now, so next year in 2024, the pressure is really going to be on him to try and get that first win done and dusted. But what was very interesting recently, despite what appears to be a very positive and good relationship, Norris came out in the press and said that Piastri has pushed him harder than any teammate he has had before and has therefore created a more stressful F1 experience for him. So let's get back on track then. So Piastri scores that first win and Norris doesn't. Whilst this would be an enormous celebration for McLaren, this would be, I think in the long term, very disruptive for that dynamic between the two drivers and for the dynamic generally at McLaren. Norris for a while now, he's been effectively the front man or the chosen one there. And I think the responsibility he's taken on to secure that win and get them back up to the top of the Constructors' Championship as quick as possible. And in his head, it's on his shoulders. It's his responsibility. It's something that he's been entrusted with. So for someone like Piastri to come along and pull a win out of the bag and take this away from him, that could create serious problems there for the chemistry at McLaren, which could then leave Norris leaving McLaren a year earlier than expected, especially if he can't follow this up with a victory of his own. But despite all this, the current chemistry between Piastri and Norris seems to be the best out there. When you look at the driver combos at teams like Alpine or Red Bull or Mercedes, you can sense a tension there and you can sense a general dislike between the two drivers. When they're asked questions about their teammates, you can tell by their body language they become uneasy and they want to just avoid the question or dodge it completely or be very quick to change the subject and spout their normal pre-arranged PR stuff. And I think a win for Piastri would see McLaren fall into this kind of thing too where there would be almost a case of one-upmanship between the two drivers, kind of similar to how like Gasly and Ocon are at Alpine. Something like this could easily damage Norris's sense of belongingness in McLaren, and this would then encourage him to want to take a little peek elsewhere at other teams and see what they have available, because at the end of 2024, there are going to be a lot of seats available at top teams. You know, with the 2023 driver market being basically non-existent, this has led to a forecast for the 2024 market to be absolutely mental, with seats at Red Bull, Ferrari, Aston, pretty much everyone else except Mercedes being up for grabs. This kind of gives Norris first dibs as to where he goes. Norris would be a fantastic asset to any team and I guarantee he'll be in high demand, especially if the 2024 McLaren has that disappointing performance that we kind of half expect from McLaren at the moment. It seems Norris has never started the season with a good car and finished with a good car. It's always been one or the other. McLaren have got it wrong numerous times now and I have a sense that he must be feeling that his abilities are going to be put to better use elsewhere. But pulling this back onto Piastri, a lot of these what ifs I'm talking about depend on if the race is won on merit or if this is done because he's lucked into it due to retirements and things like that. In the record books, a win is a win, but I think if Norris saw Piastri luck his way into it, it would be less of a problem, but I think it would still plague him anyway. But ultimately, I don't think there's long left. I think that he will leave McLaren one way or another. There's a lot of rumblings about Norris having discussions with Red Bull at the moment. Now, the other thing is, does Norris have the minerals to deal with the Red Bull lot? Maybe not, but he might probably do better than Perez is right now, definitely. Also, and this is hot off the press, is that McLaren are looking to have some sort of partnership with Toyota moving forward. And shortly after the Japanese Grand Prix, they announced the signing of the Toyota WEC driver, Rio Hirakawa. He's a Toyota works driver and he looks pretty good at what he does, so fair play. So with Norris out the door one way or another, could we possibly see a McLaren Toyota with a lineup of Piastri and Hirakawa? And coincidentally, just in time, 
for the engine regulation change as well. I'm telling you, the Toto Wolf Mercedes engine supplier empire is crumbling. You heard it first here, folks. Let me know in the comments what you think. Love to hear from you. But for now, I really like the dynamic of Norris and Piastri. They really push each other and get the best out of each other in terms of performance. However, a Piastri win against a still winless Norris could create cracks, and I think this could affect the entire McLaren team moving forward. But this could lead to Piastri and not Norris being the bloke, the chosen guy to lead McLaren forward and back to their winning ways with Toyota engines. Anyway, whatever happens, both are great drivers and both are great personalities as well. And you know, you'd be happy to have a pint with either of them, to be honest, which is more than you can say for a lot of other drivers on the grid. Can you just imagine Lewis Hamilton in a pub? But yeah, I hope they can end the season on a high and either of them can sneak a win in somewhere. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a like if you enjoyed the video. I'm Paul, many more videos to come and I look forward to seeing you soon.